In this video, we'll demonstrate the positioning and planning for a brachial plexus MRI scan. The brachial plexus is a network of nerves that provides motor and sensory innovation to the upper extremities. Ask the patient to lie supine on the scanner table with their head in the head coil. Give the patient ear protection such as earplugs and headphones according to the manufacturer's guidelines. Give the patient an emergency buzzer, ensuring they know how and when to use it. Securely place and fasten the head and neck coil. For larger patients, you can place an additional coil anteriorly for extra coverage. Center the laser beam localizer over the sternoclavicular joint. And move the patient into the bore of the magnet. Ensure the patient is calm and comfortable before leaving the room. Back in the control room, select the correct patient, entering an accurate height and weight, so that the SAR or specific absorption rate can be calculated precisely. Select the correct protocol and register the patient as head first supine. Begin with a three plane localizer. In this protocol, we'll start with a T2 stir coronal sequence. Angle the positioning block parallel to the spinal cord. Adjust so that coverage is from the sternoclavicular joint anteriorly to the cervical spinous processes posteriorly. Superiorly cover from C2 down to at least T4. For the T1 coronal, we can copy the positioning and slices of the previous coronal sequence. Viewed on the coronal plane, the brachial plexus tracks downwards and outwards from the spinal cord and the box should be big enough to include right and left shoulder joints. We'll now wait for the coronal sequence to be acquired so that we can accurately plan the T1 axial sequence. Here we're scrolling back and forth to assess for image quality and to check that coverage is sufficient. We can see the brachial plexus tracking originating from the level of C5 to T1. On the coronal image, angle the positioning block perpendicular to the spinal cord and the field of view or FOV should be big enough to image the brachial plexus from the right to the left shoulder joint. On the sagittal localizer, aim to angle the positioning block perpendicular to the spinal cord and cover from at least C3 superiorly down to T4. In the axial plane, make sure the box is centered and again that the FOV is sufficiently large. For the T2 stir axial, you can copy the planning and positioning as above. Here we're checking the completed T1 coronal sequence to verify image quality and coverage. Having acquired a T1 axial sequence, we can now plan the T2 sagittal. This is planned on the affected side or the side the patient is experiencing symptoms. Coverage is from the mid sagittal plane to cover the nerve roots from the spinal cord through to the shoulder joint. Scroll through on the axial images to ensure correct coverage. Check the positioning block in the sagittal localizer and apply.
Scrolling through the axial images, we can see all of the brachial plexus anatomy is covered, from the right to the left shoulder joint. The following sequences are optional. These are the oblique and post-contrast sequences and are performed in accordance with radiologist preference or instructions. The first is a T2 axial oblique, small FOV of the affected side. On the coronal image, angle the positioning block parallel to the path of the brachial plexus, ensuring coverage from the spinal cord to the shoulder joint. The angle in the sagittal plane is perpendicular to the spinal cord. Next, we can perform a T2 sagittal oblique small FOV. This sagittal is angled perpendicular to the brachial plexus. Increase your slices if needed to cover from the spinal cord to the shoulder joint. On this T2 axial oblique, we can clearly trace the length of the brachial plexus. Contrast may be required if instructed by the radiologist. These are T1 fat saturated sequences in the axial and coronal planes. In these examples, we're utilizing Dixon sequences. For information on Dixon and other fat saturation methods, you can refer to our website, mrimaster.com. Administer a gadolinium-based contrast injection. The dose should be calculated according to the manufacturer's instructions. For the planning, we're copying the centering of the slices from the previous sequences, though the slice thicknesses are different. As before, make sure you're covering the whole of the brachial plexus. This is the acquired T2 sagittal oblique. We can see the nerves and trace them from the spinal cord to the shoulder joint. This is the post-contrast axial sequence. As you can see, fat is suppressed so that the contrast enhanced anatomy can be seen more clearly. These are the coronal post-contrast images. Again, we're checking for image quality and full coverage.